Hi, this is 14.6, the chain rule. So we're going to do the chain rule with our multivariable equations. And so what we did before was we had all of our partial uh, dealt with functions that were like this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, but we're going to define x and y in terms of another variable. And so then when we take the derivatives, we're going to have to chain things off. And that's kind of the idea. So we'll do this in two ways. You can do it one directly, just substitute in the two functions and solve for it. And the other one is to use the chain rule. And so we're going to show you the chain rule mostly, but we'll try the direct way first. So let's write our g function first. So if I take g of t, that's going to be taking this and putting it for x, and taking this and putting it for y. Yeah. So we got t squared. We're going to square it and then multiply by my y, 2t plus 1. Then I've got to deal with the sine of x, so it's going to be plus the sine of whatever x is, so that's my t squared. So this is just substitution. So now if I go ahead and find uh, g prime, but before we do that, let's simplify a little bit. So I simplified it, now I can take the derivative with respect to t, so I'm going to get 10t to the fourth plus 4t to the third plus derivative of sine cosine and then we got to chain it off. Okay, so then that is our answer if we did it directly. Now let's use the chain rule. Okay, so now with the chain rule, we do it in a little bit of gimmicky way. This helps us set us up. So if we start off with z, we got the function of z, and it's going to be in x and it's in y. And both of those functions are within t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top and go down. And so when I take my derivative this way, I'm taking my partial with respect to x. And when I go down this way, similar type thing, partial with respect to y. And then now here, when I take these derivatives, they're not partials really, because it's just going to be dx dt. And here we're going to have dy dt, because I just have x in terms of t and y in terms of t. So to set this up for my g prime, all I'm going to do is go down here and if I want things in terms of t from the x side, then I'm just going to multiply my partial and then my other derivative. Now this notation doesn't match up perfectly, but it is the idea that this is going to cancel with this when we do the chain rule. And then we're going to go ahead and go down the other side in order to do the same thing, and we're just going to add that in. So this would be d, uh, the partial with respect to y times, oh, not a partial, y and t. So if I set up this little chart here, all I'm doing is going from here on down, and that's going to be one piece. I'm going to start here and go on down here. Multiply those pieces, and then when you get the two, you add them together. Or I suppose you can just memorize this. So if I do this first piece here, I'm going to take my partial with respect to x, and that is coming from here, that is going to be my partial. And then when I do dx dt, that's going to be 2 times t, because I get it from here. And then do the same thing for the y. Now this is in a bunch of different variables, and I want my answer in terms of t. So now I'm going to have to take the x and y and put it back into my t's. So I went ahead and simplified this, and I back substituted in the t for the x and the y, whatever functions that I did have up here, and then I can simplify this right here, and then I finalize this with, and I made a small mistake that I just changed, so that should be a 4, that should be a 3 in there. Then I combine my like terms, and I get what I was after. It should be the same thing as if I did it the other way. Now, you might say that the other way was a lot easier. Well, that's true, but sometimes you just can't do it that other way. And then also, we're setting up for future items, too, with this chain rule. So we got to check. Turned out the same, so it does work. So let's use the chain rule for example number two. So I'm given in z, and they want me to find dz dt, and then I have x and t and y and t. So let's set up our little chart here. So we're going to go for x, and we're going to go for y, and then we're going to come back to t. So this would be my partial. 
and I'm going to pause this and fill it out. And there's my little chart. So once again, we just go down and multiply, down and multiply. So my dz dt is equal to all this. Go ahead and try this and pause this and try this for yourself. See if you can do it and then come back and check. That's the best way for you to learn. So I found all the partials and the derivatives that I needed to do. Then I just go ahead and multiply. So there's my dz dt. Now I have to go and substitute out my y's and my x's. Make sure you find all of them to sort it out. So this is what we end up with. I don't see too much simplification going on, but let's see if we can get anything out of this. At best, you can probably just put this 2t into both these terms, and this 1 over t into both these terms, but <clears throat> that's about it. Okay, so that is finding dz dt using the chain rule. Now, what we're going to do is step this up a little bit and say the independent variables might have their own multiple independent variables. So if I look at now x and y, now they're defined in to be of u and v. And z is still in x and y. Okay, so we've got to do this and ramp this up a little bit more. Let's do a diagram to help us with this first. So I got z in x and y, and you can do this with a tree diagram or do a crisscross. I prefer the tree. So I'm going to come down here, and then this is going to be u, and this is going to be v. And this one's going to be u, and this one's going to be v. So I want going down here, and then I'm going to go this way, and then I'm going to go this way, and then I'm going to go this way. So let's start this off. We get the partial with respect to x, and we get the partial with respect to y. Okay, so far so good. Then what do I get when I'm down here? Well, since I have it of two variables, I'm going to have to do partials. So this is going to be my partial of x with respect to u. And then this one's going to be x in with v. And then y over here is going to be partial y with u and y with v. Okay, so if I'm going to want things in terms of u, I'm going to have to come down that one path. This will take a little bit of organization, right? So that's the biggest thing with these problems is organization and take your time. So since this bottom here says partial with respect to u, I need to finish with u on both of them. So I take the x portion, so I'm going to go down here, and then I take the y portion, which will take me down here. Oh, I missed. It would go that way. Okay, try to write out the partial with respect to v. So here I found uh, my partials with respect to x and y, and now I got to find the partial of x with respect to v and y with respect to v and u as well. So if I go up here and work off of this one right here, if I take that derivative, i got to bring the 2 out in front, leave the inside alone, and then I have to do a chain with respect to u. So this is going to be times 2 u. Okay? And then you can similarly follow along with the rest of them. So you can try those, write them out. So if I do this with respect to u, I get... So now I have everything I need right here. You can do this in your head, but boy, what a mess. So it's best to write it out, I think, and then plug in the pieces that you got. Since we have both, both functions here very similar, we're going to end up with these things being very similar to each other as well. Now you got to replace the x and y. When you place the x and y, let's do this red one first. If I come down here, and you could have simplified this first, uh, but Notice that I have this function, u squared plus v squared quantity squared, and then I have this in the numerator. So I'm going to be dividing by this one up here. So I'm going to end up with 1 in the denominator and cancels off. So I got a 2 and a 2, which gives me a 4. And then I have a u, 
and then this is all over u squared plus v squared. Just one of them left because I had two up here, and then I had, which goes in the denominator, and one here, which is in the numerator. And similarly, I get this one. Different numerator, though, because I got 3u squared and a 2. And in the denominator, same kind of cancellation. The partial with respect to v will set up very similar. And then there's my partial with respect to v. Okay, so this would be your answer that you would be looking for for this problem. It's not difficult. It's just you have to be orderly. You have to be organized. That's the best way to do it. Okay, let's try this last one. It's very similar to what we just did, so why don't you try it, and then I'll just spit out the answer. And, you know, take care of yourself. Do it, and then come back and check. So pause, please. Whoa, this is a lot, huh? Okay, so if we look at what we got, if you kept organized, we have uh, the partial of z with respect to u here, and we plugged in all the pieces, and now look at it in here. This is simply u squared times cosine squared plus sine squared. What is cosine squared plus sine squared? Yes, that's a 1. And so I'm going to be left with negative sine of u squared times 2u cosine squared of v, and then so on, the rest of it. Now I'm going to have this. I'm sorry, this one in common with both of them, and then also the 2u in common. So I pull that out, and then look at I get that again, the Pythagorean identity. And so then I end up with this right here. If you do a similar setup for the v, I hope you try this, what's going to happen is that you're going to end up with this piece and this piece very similar to what I have, but one's positive, one's negative, and so it's going to be 0. Now what you can do is just do a direct method for this one, and it would be a lot easier. So you're probably irritated with me right now, but the direct method would be a little bit more straightforward for this problem than what we did with the chain rule. But we had to show you the chain rule and go through it, and then you can figure out when to use direct method or chain rule, but if it says to use chain rule, use chain rule, okay? So I hope that this went okay. If you have questions, ask in class, and then we'll go through it. Take care. Have a great day.